I want to start out with a de- definition this morning, the definition of the sound. If you're new to Heart of the City Church, so glad that you're with us. The sound is our uh, conference coming up on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd of January. It's an amazing conference. We have uh, uh, Brother Charlie Sweet coming in from Florida and Giselle uh, Bonilla coming in and one Italian, one Puerto Rican. I think you're going to be extremely blessed, incredible prophet, prophetess. Uh, you will love them. But I want to read a definition of what I put together as the sound. God's gathering of his saints with the hunger, and I added this this morning, and desire of ushering in his presence for the purpose of hearing the sound above all sounds, above all noise, above all clutter, above all busyness, above all social, I almost said media, but really I said it the way that I wanted to, above all social meanness, above all confusion, the sound above all sounds, God's unadulterated voice. John 10, 27, 28 says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I will give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Listen to this. Love this beautiful news. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Wow. Pray with me. Holy Spirit, we now invite you. You're here. We recognize that. We want you to know that we invite you. We open the door to our heart to receive your word this morning. Thank you that we're not alone. Jesus didn't leave us orphans. And we welcome you here into this place in Jesus' name, and everyone said, Amen. I hear the voice of God. I love when I hear the voice of God. I had a prophetic word for a gentleman last night. I felt like God began to minister me in heart prep. That's our, our prayer time before uh, gatherings. I hear God's voice in, 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 in his word. I hear it at times in worship. I hear it sometimes through a whisper. I hear his voice sometimes through open and closed doors. Sometimes I get impressions, and I hear God's voice in many ways. Sometimes it's not easy for me to hear God's voice. Sometimes the clutter of my soul and my own damaged emotions, my own thoughts and mind, all those different things can really hinder me hearing the voice of God. It's amazing when God speaks through someone that, may not know you in a very clear way that you can hear God through another individual. A prophetic word, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. It's a wonderful, wonderful, especially if you're not accustomed to hearing God's word or his voice or maybe you've gotten confused, or maybe you're going through a dark season of your life. It's a beautiful thing to hear God's voice through someone, and you go, wow, I just know that was God speaking to me. That's one of the the main reasons why we do what we do in the area of the sound. I can't teach you at all in two gatherings. We've set aside this Sunday, which calling it the the, the, the potential and the power of prophecy. And next Sunday, Prophecy Now, you're going to hear from four different situations where God moved in a moment, especially three of them, where God touched them in a prophetic atmosphere right then and there, and things changed in a moment. Today, I'm talking a little bit more futuristic of the potential of prophecy because I think it has great potential, but God works through you and I a lot of times. I I, I scribbled down some scriptures today, if you would put those up, because I think it's easy to get lazy and you're like, well, I've never really heard about prophecy, and does the Bible really talk about prophecy? The Bible is a prophetic book. It's prophecy. It's got many, many prophets that wrote God speaking through them to write the scriptures. There's over 300 prophetic utterances of Jesus coming, the Messiah, and you might want to take a picture of that. I just wrote down about 10 or 12 scriptures that are very, very good when it comes to prophecy. In case 
you're from a different tradition, and in case you wasn't raised uh, to think that God speaks today and God heals today and, and God, so forth and so on, these are beautiful scriptures and chapters in the area of prophecy and word of knowledge, etc., that I think would bless your heart. Uh, instead of being critical about prophecy, why don't you kind of maybe shut your mouth and get in the word of God and see what God's word says about it? How about, that's good, isn't it? I find that people are critical about things when they don't understand something. And so got the, they got an opinion about it. It's like, well, your opinion really doesn't line up with God's word right now. So why don't you get into the Word and see what God says about these different things, gifts and so forth and so on. I'm passionate about the voice of God because of how it's impacted our life. Me and Ray Deans had CDs in our car of prophetic words over our life, press retreat that we were sent out when we planted Heart of the City Church and saw line after line after word after word after word come to pass. But there was a time where God really spoke to us in a way that changed our lives, and I want to start with that today. About 25 years ago, uh, I was a youth pastor over Generation Ministries Capital Christian Center, and we were having a youth gathering called SnowQuest in Donnelly, Idaho. I had met a guy named uh, Tracy Armstrong. Some of you are familiar with him now. Uh, I met him at a Mario Marilla gathering, and, and, and Tracy uh, introduced himself. We were talking, oh no, someone introduced us and brought him in for this special SnowQuest. Didn't know how. Prophetic, lethal, edgy Tracy was. Heard about it, but it's different to experience it. And right in the beginning of the gathering, right after the worship, he had a word. He says, I feel like, now this is youth and young adults, I feel like someone in the room has cancer in a female organ. Well, back up just a short distance, I came home one day and there was these peach orange pieces of paper in my kitchen of a diagnosis of my wife having breast cancer. She hadn't told me yet at the time. I got a call from the doctor saying, hey, you need to talk to your wife because she is like, uh, she, 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 she's living, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a word, in denial. And I'm like, no, my, my wife, I have a strong wife. I don't think it's denial. She has great, strong faith. But you, you, need, to talk to, you need to talk to your wife. Oh, okay, okay. And about that same time, I find these pieces of paper at my house about not good news of partial mastectomy and so forth and so on. I hope y'all can handle this kind of news because it's real. Now we're at this conference, SnowQuest, and this word comes through, and all of a sudden, no one knows about my wife except her, me, and the doctor. And Radine stands up, and I think people were shocked. And she went forward. That was the word of knowledge. You, you need to understand the, the prophetic way of God. Everyone say word of knowledge. Word of knowledge is God speaking to you, something that maybe you only know, but he will get your attention with a word of knowledge. Are you following me? All of a sudden, there's someone in the room that has da-da-da-da. Word of knowledge. She stands up, comes forward. Then come the word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. You've had two diagnoses. I want you to get the third test. On the third test, it's going to come back negative, and cancer is going to be broken in your body. You follow that? Word of knowledge. Say that with me. Word of knowledge. Word of, knowledge. Word of wisdom. Word of wisdom. Giving you direction of what you should do. So, kind of awkwardly, we get a third test. We go in. We ask for it. Uh, he's a specialist. He's not into it. He mentioned like, hey, your herbs and your fasting and your things is not going to help you. What's going to help you is me. He had a little bit of a, probably of a professional attitude. And um, we, we just wanted a third test. So we, we set it up, we go in, when you go into this place, Tumor Institute of Boise, Idaho, it's very, very sad. You see people in all kinds of situations and conditions. It's very, very, it feels a bit depressing. We go in, she gets the third test. My wife is actually smiling and giggling through the test. Very unique. He goes, I got to make sure I got enough cells. I'm going to go across the road and I'll be back. 
He goes out the door. Someone comes in the door, shuts the door, and says, I want to know what's up with you guys. I'm like, okay, it's a nurse. And she goes, this place is a place of death, and you're, you're, you're you know, smiling and laughing. And I'm like, wow, she just asked me to preach the gospel to her. <laughs> and we shared about Jesus, and we shared with her, and she was really touched. And she said, I'm going to bring my daughter to your church. And we're... Hallelujah. Doctor comes back in and says, I got enough cells. I'm going to call you Friday at noon. Kind of with an attitude to tell you what we already know. Phone doesn't call, uh, ring at noon. Rings a little bit later. We still have a landline back in the day. And I pick it up. They won't tell me anything. Hand it to Ray Dean. Ray Dean gets it. I put my ear up to the phone. And the doctor says, we've had like two chemists look at this. And there's no cancer in your wife's body. Right? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Now, through that week, there was a battle, a huge battle. We were standing on God's word. We were declaring God's word. We were, but we were fighting the good fight of faith. I called Tracy Armstrong up. I'm like, hey, bro, this is my wife, man. Did you hear from God? And he's like, did you get the third test? He never wavered. I heard from God. And he did hear from God. Amen. What's a mystery about this is that she still had a tumor. The doctor says, I want to cut it out. He still didn't believe it. And she goes, well, we're going on vacation, and, you know, I'll let you do that later on. And so she did. She did. You know, if your right eye causes you sin, what do you do? Pluck it out. Left eye, your arm causes you, offends you, cut it off. Goes in, and he cuts it out, and he slices it, and he dices it. And he looks at it and studies it. And guess what? There's no cancer, right? <laughs> J.O., I don't believe in the prophetic or the word of knowledge or the word of wisdom. It's too late. <laughs> it's, it's way too late. You're behind. Well, I wasn't trained that way. That's okay, but get on board now. Because this is the God that we serve. Two keys. One key is this, faith. Say that with me, faith. You have to have faith in this area. Amen. You can come all day long to the sound and all day long to church and do all that you want to do, but you have to have faith. God, when you really believe God's going to do what he says he's going to do, I think it really honors the heart of the Father. Right. Jehoshaphat's got his back against the wall. He is fearful. And a prophetic word comes. And it stirs him, and then he tells the people, this is what he tells the people. Jehoshaphat tells the people, he says, believe in the Lord your God. And No, the prophet tells the people, believe in the Lord your God, and you will be established. Believe his prophets, and you will prosper. Believe. Did you hear that? Believe. believe. You can get a word and just go, yeah, that was cute. We're going to talk about the potential of the word. I believe that Radian and I... We could have got the word and go, we're not going to get the third test. We already got a diagnosis from a pro professional. We're already in the midst of this. But you know what we did? We saw the potential of the word. We stood on it, declared it, and got the third test and saw God move beautifully. Why did he do it that way? I don't know. Ask God. But he does things sometimes in a very mysterious way. So one is faith. The other is this, knowledge. So many, so many people don't have knowledge in these areas. And you know what Hosea says? Hosea says, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So my heart today is that you gain knowledge in this area if you lack it and to strengthen your faith in this area if you need strengthening in your faith because faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Let me, let me share just a few scriptures on prophecy and, and the power of prophecy. 1 Corinthians 14, 1 through 5 says this, pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. If you're in this room today and you're like, man, I've never desired a spiritual gift, you need to repent. Because the Bible says for you to pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. But especially that you may prophesy. Moses says, I wish y'all would prophesy. 
For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. You're like, tongues, are, that's a t- tongue speaking church. Tongue. Listen, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? And if you are, you, there's a great chance you're going to have a prayer language. And if you're not, I would highly encourage it because it to- Holy Spirit changed radically my life in 1988. I've never was raised that way. Well, get raised up the way the Bible teaches. Not, the Bible says, because of the the traditions of man. The traditions of man makes the word of God of no effect. I'm not going to follow the traditions of man over God's word. No, never. Heart of the city church is not either. He who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he who prophesies speaks, look, look, look at this, edification, exhortation, and comfort. When you hear prophecy, when you hear uh, uh, Brother Charlie, and, and uh, it, usually any type of prophecy here at Heart of the City Church, Genzel sharing a word, it's going to come with that spirit and attitude. It's not going to come like Old Testament, I'm getting ready to whack you out. That's not New Testament prophecy. If there is a rebuke or a correction, it will be done privately. Are you following me? I've seen that uh, before, and it happens, and that's a wonderful thing because it's still in love. But it's going to come with an attitude of, listen, it's going to come with edification, cheer you up, build you up, and pump you up in the spirit. You got that? But he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. That's a beautiful way to build up your spirit, man. But he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke in tongues, but even more that you prophesied. For he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with the tongue, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. There is a serious false teaching in the church today that I think is lethal. And that lethal teaching is easy to believe. It takes no faith to believe it. And it's this, that healing Words of knowledge, words of wisdom, miracles, signs, and wonders. All all of that has ceased. And it's a dangerous theology. All the way through the Bible. Old Testament, New Testament. I got news for you. It hasn't ceased. If you were trained that way or taught that way, I want you to look at God's word And you make the decision on your own because it has not ceased. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It takes very little faith to believe. Now, you'll have to fight sometimes for a word. You have to fight for a miracle. You have to fight for signs and wonders. But I tell you what, I I heap rather go down fighting than just go, oh, this is easy, easy way out. It just doesn't happen anymore. That's not Bible at all. And it's not our theology at all. Prophetic words have potential. Say that with me, potential. Potential is having or showing the capacity to develop or become into something in the future. So you may get a word like, you're going to get third test, it's going to come back negative. You have to stand on that word, believe the word. You can test the word You might have to fight for the word, but just don't let it lay dormant because it has great potential. All of a sudden, God may speak a word to you that you're going to do this, that, or the other. You can set it up on the shelf, or you can actually believe it and receive it, walk it out and see God meet you in it, and it's powerful. It has great potential. Back about 30 years ago, there was a group of prophets from New York City in Eureka, California, at the church we were at, Gospel Outreach, and Radine and I snuck into the meeting. Why did we sneak? Because it was for young adults. It was for singles. And we were married, so we just kind of snuck in. We're sitting in the back, and this prophet from New York called me out. I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm not even supposed to be here. Calls me out, stands me up, and says, 
you're going to operate in a prophetic teaching gift. And I really didn't even, I probably didn't even know what was prophetic and what was a teaching gift. But you know what I did? I believe it. I stepped out in it. And now it's part of my life. And he spoke it 30 years ago. You know, that word had great potential. But if I would have said, hey, I'm not going to receive that. I don't know what that means. I'm not going to. Wow. It just would have laid dormant. Prophetic words have great potential. God wants to use you in a mighty way. God can do whatever he desires to do. But many times he works within our faith, listen, and our willingness. And are you willing? You're like, well, he gave me a word. If it's going to happen, it's just going to happen. No, I don't agree with that. Because he wants you to work with the word of God. He wants to work with your faith. He wants to work through your willingness and your choosing. Are you with me today? Um, There's a young man. He's older now, married. Hi, Zach. Two beautiful kids. And he had a word many years ago. He's probably had three or four words. And the first time he got the word, I think he was serving at... uh, at Texas Roadhouse, right? And so he was, I knew him. He was kind of figuring out what he was doing in life. Now he's an amazing man of God, husband, dad, great, successful. And I asked him to do this video because it kind of shows the potential of the word of God. If you believe it, grasp a hold of it and stand on it. Watch this video. Hey guys, my name is Zach. J.O. asked me to share a little bit about the prophetic and uh, I wanted to share with you guys my story a little bit. I can remember, uh, gosh, probably 10 years ago now, I was a young, you know, I was 21 years old. Uh, loved the Lord, but didn't know what I wanted to do. I, if I wanted to do business or ministry or, uh, you know, where I was going. And I can remember the sound, the conference. I went to it uh, and had never received a prophetic word in my life. And uh, you know, I was, I, I, I went to a Saturday night service, and uh, the 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 prophet called me up, and he pretty much read my book, read my mind, and said, hey. You know, I don't know if you want to do this or, or you kind of want to do that. You want to do business or ministry uh, and pretty much said, you know, I'm not going to separate the two in you. You should do one and the same and led me down a path of being in business. And I wanted to speak to that a little bit and, and the impact it's had on me. Um, you know, I've, I've had three or four more words since then that have all been the same, you know, pretty, pretty much up in the, in the business world and uh, going in that direction. And, you know, I, I, I took those things to heart. Uh, and I 100% believed it, um, not because of the word I got, but because I felt like God was speaking to me uh, in my heart, and I felt like um, you know, God had called me to this direction and path, so I cling to that, those words that I get. I cling to that every single time uh, that I'm either struggling or in, in, the, in, in the pits. Um, I know that God uh, has called me, and, and I use those prophetic words to, um, you know, I, I believe those prophetic words in my life, so I think it's very um, important to you know, test it to, to, to know that, you know, that, that it's a good source, but also um, when, once you do, you believe it and you trust it fully and know that God has, has that life for you and that you, you can step into that world. So that's my, that's my two cents, my experience with prophetic word. And I encourage you guys to really dive into that as we step into heading closer to the sound. Right. Right. Trust it, step into it, believe it. Naaman, great job. Naaman. He had leprosy, and he heard about this prophet Elijah. And his servant girl said, hey, if you go there, I believe you can be healed. And it's a a beautiful, longer story in 2 Kings. But he goes there, and Elijah, man, Elijah's the man. Brother's doing double portion what his father in the Lord did, Elijah. And he doesn't even go meet the dude. He sends a messenger, and he says, tell him through the messenger, go and dip seven times in the Jordan. And the messenger comes and he tells Naaman this, and Naaman gets totally offended. Do you know how many times I've seen people get offended at the sound? The prophet didn't act like you wanted him to act and say the way that you wanted to say. And and prophets can be kind of mystique and unique. And so Naaman is furious. He goes, well, I thought the man of God would come out here and he would do this and he would do this and he would talk like this and he would do his hands like this and... All these weird expectations. It's like, Naaman, you need to shut up and just do what the prophet said, man. Right? And the the servant says, hey, if he'd have told you to do something great, wouldn't you have done it? You know what he ends up doing? He ends up going and dips seven times, and guess what happens to him? He gets healed. Believe the prophet, 
and prosper. Are you feeling me today? Let me give you a little highlight of, of Joseph just for a minute. Feel this. Joseph was a dreamer, but he was an interpreter of dreams. His brothers hated on him. Uh, his dad rebukes him. He's thrown into a pit, got delivered out of the pit. He's sold as a, uh, uh, into a uh, slave trade and falsely accused, and he's in prison, and he interprets dreams in prison, and they're excited, and we're going to get you out, but he, he, got, he gets forgotten in prison, and all of a sudden, the king of Egypt gets a dream, and they say, man, we know a guy who can interpret this dream. They shave him, clean him up, bring him before the king. He hears the dream, and he says, you know, it's God who interprets dreams, and then he begins to give him a word of knowledge. Say that with me, knowledge. knowledge. The dream, the two are one. Word of knowledge. And he begins to say, you know, the, the fat cows and, the, you know, eating the, the skinny cows. If you don't know it, you should just read it. Uh, the, the fat wheat kernels, eating the small wheat kernels, so forth and so on. And he really gets, of course, the king's attention. The two are one. And then he says this, listen to this, here's the word of knowledge. Indeed, seven years of great plenty will come throughout all the land of Egypt, but after these seven years, a famine will arise, and all the plenty will be forgotten of the land of Egypt, and the famine will be depleted of the land. Everyone say word of knowledge. That's what's going to happen. But then he follows it with a word of wisdom. What's wisdom? This is what you need to walk out. This is how you save your business. This is how you save your nation. This is how you save your marriage. This is how you save your child. In this case, nations. Word of wisdom. He says, now therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and collect one-fifth of the produce of the land of Egypt in seven plentiful years. And let them gather all the food of those year, good years that are coming and store up grain until the authority of Pharaoh. And let them keep food in the cities. Then the food will be as a reserve. Somebody say insurance man. That's what Joseph became, the first insurance man. Then the food shall be as a reserve for the land of seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, and the land shall, uh, may not perish during the famine. God uses a word of knowledge and then a word of wisdom. And guess who the king chose for this position? Joseph. He was a foreigner. He just was in prison, you guys. Come on. And God chose him and made this foreign man the governor of Egypt. And he operated in what he had explained to the king. And guess what? Because of a word of knowledge and a word of wisdom, he saved the nation. And nations all around believe the prophet and prosper. You know, Jesus operated in the word of knowledge. Not just the Old Testament, Jesus himself. He's at a well, talking to a Samaritan lady by himself. All the boundaries that I would explain everyone not to do, but he's God. He can do whatever he wants to do. Begins talking about living water, talks about the well, and he drops a word of knowledge on this lady. And he says, for you have five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. And she said, in that you spoke truly. And the woman said, sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. With a word of knowledge, he rocked her world. Her life was changed. She goes back, turns Samaria upside down. Come and see a man told me all the things I ever did. And he really didn't say that. He didn't say all the things she had ever did, he just went like this. I'm going to touch the deepest, most darkest, hurting spot in her heart. Five husbands that now live in. Bam! Rocked her world. Many got saved because of her testimony. And then Jesus goes and rocks Samaria. And many more. Where Jews wouldn't even enter turns that city upside down and it all began 
with a word of knowledge. If you're a cessationalist, what does that mean, J.O.? You believe that things ceased? You need to awaken. Because you know what Jesus said? This is what bothers me about that theology. Because Jesus himself says, Most assuredly I say to you, He who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Why would Jesus in ever say that if he just expected everything to cease? No, he's on the right hand of the Father right now. And he wants us to operate in all the gifts. Believe me, in this day and time, we need everything from heaven we can get. Every sign and wonder, every miracle, come on, every word of knowledge, every word of wisdom, every prophecy. We need everything from heaven that he has for us. So don't bring that sea stuff in the heart of the city church. Don't bring a name and attitude in the heart of the city church. I'm hungry for God. And we need him. Our world, our nation needs him like never before. I'll leave you with this. Eight things I think you should do. If you get a personal word at the sound, I think there's eight things that you should do. It's right behind me on the screen, right? Are they with me? Thank you. Test it. Say that with me. Test it. Test it. If it's not God... If it doesn't line up with the word, throw it in the garbage. There is no prophet that has some kind of special revelation about the word of God. Test it. Number two, can I have my drink right there? Say this is a prophetic word. I'm going to test it. Well, it's not poison, sparkling water. Okay, I can drink it. Well, I got to do something to open it. So... My faith and my works is going to open this, or it can just sit, on my, sit in my refrigerator for 100 years. It can, sit on my, in the, it can sit there, but I test it. It looks good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, my faith will go, whoop. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm, smells good. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to receive it. Mmm, good stuff. I'm going to drink of the Word of God. I'm going to receive the prophetic word. I'm going to believe the prophetic. I'm going to stand on the prophetic. I'm going to declare the prophetic word. You said the third test. You said the third test. I'm going to pray it. I'm going to do it. And I will fight for it. Why? Because God said it. Amen.